Hi and welcome to Old Time Knowledge. Well, I've got a lot going on today, guys. A lot going on today. I have got to clean up my refrigerator and clean out my refrigerator, mostly clean it out because my son is going on a Sam's Club run for me today to do a pickup. And I have got to make some room in my freezer and in my refrigerator for all the goodies that he's going to be bringing home. So stick with me and we'll get right to cleaning this and then I'm gonna show you the haul and what I do to take care of it. Alrighty, so this is the inside of my messy refrigerator, which is totally full of all kinds of things that are probably, as far as the condiments and stuff in the door, probably some of them need to be tossed. I definitely have some leftovers in there that we've eaten on them as much as we want and we need to empty them out. The freezer has a lot of just, it's not really well organized space. I need to figure out how to make some space in here because I have got some serious stuff coming that's going to be going in this freezer by the end of this video. So let's see what happens. All right, so the refrigerator is cleaned out. Y'all don't judge my refrigerator on the outside because I don't bother cleaning the outside until the inside is all clean. Um, the inside is the priority for me. I, I This stainless type refrigerator just drives me nuts because it shows every little spot all the time. Anyway, look, I've got so much more space now. I've cleaned it up. I actually put some parchment paper in the door liners just because I was like, you know, why am I scrubbing these all the time? I, if I have paper, I can just change it out. So some more time goes by and now my freezer's cleaned out. And I learned a really cool trick that I can't believe, I mean, I shouldn't have had to learn it, but I just didn't think about doing it. My vegetables were in plastic, those big plastic bags, but I have put them in food saver bags. Um, like I've done this with meats, I've done this with so many things, but I've never thought to take the, the frozen vegetables in my freezer and repackage them so that they take up less space. And the cool part about this is they're going to last a lot longer. They're not going to get that freezer burn, those ice crystals and everything on them. So I have plenty of space in here now for all the meats and whatnot that are coming. I can't wait to get this done. So hopefully my son will be home soon with that order and then we can start processing it and get everything put away. All right, so he's back. And rather than putting my whole haul out on my limited counter space, I'm just gonna walk you through each of the, the items that we got and how I'm going to be storing them and how I'm going to be using them. You can see I'm speeding through this. Right now, I am just cutting some food saver bags and sealing the ends of them, getting them ready for this enormous pork loin that we have. I was so excited to see this and the price. I, I haven't been to Sam's Club in a long time and I just decided, you know what? We have Sam's Club Plus. I'm gonna do an online order and just let my son go pick it up. The store is is like 40 minutes from our house, so we don't go there very often. Mostly I use them for deliveries, but this was totally worth it. Such a huge money saver to get these groceries this way. This pork loin came to, it was under $2 a pound. This is an eight pound pork loin. I'm gonna cut this into four separate pork loins that I'm gonna seal up. And just a little thing, I don't know if, if you have a food saver or not, but I always like to roll down the tops of these. My sister-in-law taught me this. If you roll down the tops, then when you put like messy stuff in that has like juice and stuff on it, it, it makes it easier so you don't have to get every single part of the top of the bag with the with the juice on it. So anyway, I'm cutting this huge pork loin in half and then I'm gonna cut those halves in half so we'll have quarters and I mean, this is gonna be four delicious meals. I love pork loin. There are so many amazing recipes you can make with it. I'm definitely going to be putting one on the channel soon. I realize that I don't have any um, any recipes for pork loin on here, but there's so many good ways to, to do this. Um, gotta get a little bit of this juice up. Can't have all this stuff leaking all over the counter. So um, those are the first two. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other, other half cut in half, and then we'll be ready to get these in the food saver bags. And you know, doing them like this, obviously it's going to be way easier to store them like this than it is that huge, long, eight pound, ginormous pork loin. So, and this makes it so much easier putting them in the bags with the tops rolled down like that, because that way I can just wash my hands and then get my fingers under where I've rolled it and then pull them up and then seal them. I'm still going to totally sanitize everything when I'm done working with this. I always do that when I use my food saver and I'm doing anything with any kind of raw meats. I sanitize everything 
um, I use bleach <laughs> or I'll use Clorox wipes for my counter, but I, I definitely, will, I'm a big proponent of sanitizing things. So just getting these sealed up and I'm going to get these in my freezer and then we will move on to the next thing. But this is four dinners for four people. So we're talking like what, 16 meals for $16. I mean, that's amazing. That's such a good deal. So now on to the next item, which is these frozen chicken tenderloins. These are cheaper than getting a package of fresh chicken tenderloins, not by much, but the main reason why I did it this way is these are already frozen. So when I put them in the fruit food saver bags to package out, it's going to be so much easier because they're just not going to be like, you know, soft, fresh chicken tenderloins. So this is a six pound bag and I am going to be dividing this up into about four packages. So each, each package is going to get about what one and a half pounds. The whole, the whole bag of six pounds of these chicken tenderloins was right at about $20. And that, that's great. Um, I love these for doing my um, restaurant style chicken tenders, which I will link a video to in the, sh in the show notes below. But also I can cut these up to do um, like chicken piccata or basically anything you're gonna do with chicken breast. Um, you know, chicken fried rice. I mean, there's so many different things, but storing them in these individual bags like this in the food saver is going to make so much more space. I don't have this huge bag in my freezer. Plus it's going to keep them fresher longer, which I'm super happy about. That's a, that's a huge win. You know, another recipe I just thought about that I love to make with these chicken tenderloins is like the Cracker Barrel style grilled chicken tenderloins. I don't know if you've ever had those before, but those are delicious. I'll have to do a recipe for those because I haven't done that before on this channel, but they are, it's just, it's, it's a healthy way to make them. Um, it's, it's definitely a better option than breaded and fried, but still delicious. So stay tuned and I will definitely have to do a video on that sometime. All right, this next item is not going in food saver bags, but I'm still showing you because it's part of my haul. These Tyson white meat chicken nuggets. These are classics in our household. My son loved these when he was little. We still love them. It's a great quick meal um, for lunch or anything, snack, whatever. These are so good. So this is part of the haul and these are just going to live in my freezer like this and we'll use them up quickly. Now just a quick break to sanitize everything and I gotta take that tray out and wash it in the sink and wiping everything down with Clorox wipes, I wanna make sure everything is really free of any bacteria from those raw meats. Now, this is one of my favorites, just these little hard salamis that are cracker size and then some string cheese. I love having this with some Ritz crackers. It's good, I'll have this for lunch some days. What I do is I'll split this club pack in half, put half in the freezer and the other half in the fridge. And I mean, this is just quick. It's just quick for snacks, lunch, whatever. Um, I didn't even know they carried these club packs of salamis there, but they did, and I was excited about that. And the cheese sticks are fantastic. Bacon. Are you even getting a Sam's Club haul if you're not getting one of their three, three packages of bacon? And at around $10 for this three-pound package, that's just a little over $3 a pound. And I don't know about where you live, but where I live, you cannot get bacon for $3 a pound or anywhere close to it. Not even the 12-ounce packages of bacon are $3 a pound. So this is great. I mean, caramel macchiato creamer. I don't buy creamer a lot, but when I do, it's going to be probably caramel or Irish cream. All right, this next thing is going to be controversial because I get comments. I have gotten comments in the past when I have used these chubs of ground beef. You see this? This was like $3 and 20 some cents a pound. This is 10 pounds of ground beef. And here is why it's controversial, because if I have done a video before where I have ever used ground beef in one of these chubs with, and a chub is just the ground beef in a tube like this, you know, it might be, sometimes they're in the really small one pound ones, but when they're in these longer um, tubes like this, it's usually five or 10 pounds, and it's going to be a lot cheaper this way. And people will inevitably comment, that's not good quality meat, that's not, that's like, not as that's not as fresh as what's in the packages with the styrofoam but i have to tell you that's nonsense you can look this up do you think that the restaurant industry goes and buys ground beef in those little packs with the styrofoam trays no they don't they buy ground beef in these enormous things like this because that's how they can get a lot of ground beef at a good price the only reason why this is so much cheaper is they're not having to use as much packaging 
for the ground beef when they put it in these tubes. They can just process the ground beef and then feed it into these tubes and just pinch it off every so often with one of those little metal clips and slap a price on it and then that's it. Whereas the other has to be like neatly packaged out and put in the little trays and then the saran wrap has to be wrapped over it, you know, and then they weigh it and then they label it and the whole thing. Now this is, this is a great economical way to go. Walmart has um, five pound chubs of ground beef and it's a much better value. And Sam's Club has these 10 pound ones. And I mean, at 320 something for a pound of ground beef that is identical, identical to what's in the other styrofoam trays, this is a great deal. And let me tell you another thing about it like this. It is going to stay fresher in your refrigerator in this kind of tube. And so, I mean, even though I'm processing this the same day I get it, the ground beef that is in those styrofoam trays has been exposed to more air and it's just not going to be, you know, as factory fresh as what's coming out of these tubes. And when I say factory, I'm talking about the, the, the meat processing plants where they grind the ground beef to begin with, you know, because obviously it's, it's not like a factory is actually making the ground beef, but it's, you know, it, the, the point is once it goes through the processing, this is like as fresh as you're going to get it. Unless you have a butcher who has a cow who, you know, slaughters the cow and butchers it and grinds it up right there for you. This is a great way to go. Your meat has not been exposed to a lot of air. Plus, it's way cheaper. And so what I'm doing now is I am just labeling these food saver bags, as I always do, for the month and the year. And since this is 10 pounds, I'm actually going to package this out in about one and a quarter pounds per pack and I'm going to do it with different ways. Um, the, I'm going to do a couple of them for hamburger steaks and the way I do those is I do about roughly, well it'll be a little over half pound each for the hamburger steaks. So th they'll be like each package will have two hamburger steaks in it. That's for a couple of the packages and then for the rest I will be doing it for so that it could be used for hamburgers or spaghetti or meatballs or anything else that I would just want to use ground beef for. And I've got a cool way that I do this. All right, so since this is 10 pounds and I'm going to do about a pound and a quarter per bag, I'm going to cut this in half and then I'm gonna cut these halves into quarters so that there's eight pieces all together. So we're dividing this into eight sections. I'm gonna get eight bags of about a pound and a quarter each. And that this is perfect. It's just gonna make it really easy for me to divide up. So this is taking one of the halves and I'm cutting it in half. And I apologize if some of this just seems really obvious to you, but there's, there's, you know, there's a chance that somebody might, you know, might not really understand what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to show it. So I'm cutting this half in half. And then what I'm going to be doing is taking each of these pieces and um, at least for the, for two of them and cutting them in half, because that's going to be for the half pound hamburger steaks. So I'm going to go ahead and get these um, pressed out of that plastic tube. And this is pretty easy to do. Um, I mean, you don't want the meat sitting on the counter for a long time before you do this or it'll get a little bit messy. <clears throat> and you can just sort of eyeball it and make sure they all look like they're about the same. I'm not going to bother weighing these out because obviously if this is a 10 pound chub and I'm cutting it into pieces like this, I know about what size each of these are. So you see I cut each two of those in half and I'm shaping these into like little hamburger steaks. They don't have to be perfectly shaped, but uh, you know, the, the idea is just to make these so that they're kind of a nice size for when I do hamburger steaks. And I'm going to get them padded out and then get these in food saver bags. I'm not going to close them up yet. I'm just going to get them in the bags and, and put them to the side. It's just a good idea, I think, for the purpose of like quick meals to try to have things as ready as possible before you food saver them. And that's the way I handle this whole process. Um, with these other ones, I'm just putting uh, like a one of these pound and a quarter pieces into a bag. It might be what I do seems weird. I, well, for this these first couple, I go ahead and press them out a little, but I actually have another way of doing this and I have another reason for doing this, which you will see as we move ahead. But I'm just gonna go ahead and get the rest of these divided up. And once they're all divided up, I am going to go ahead and start processing them in the food saver. So here are the little hamburger steaks. So I have put these two in a bag. And when I first start sealing this, I actually will put my hand sort of between two. I'll show you what that looks like. And that's just to kind of keep them from, I don't think they would squeeze together, but if I don't want them to, I want to make sure I keep them apart. So I kind of put my hand in there as it's, 
as it's pulling the air out just to make sure they stay where they are so these will freeze just like that and it's it's just perfect this way and that way when it's time for me to cook these I can take them right out of the package and I honestly can put them right in the pan I don't have to let them thaw or anything obviously they're gonna cook longer that way but that's totally fine all right now let's get one of these one pound bags so once I take the air out of this you're gonna think it's like crazy how I do this but that's okay this is really cool to me though because this is a multi-purpose way of storing these not to mention it's super flat and it makes it really easy to store this in your freezer all right Here's the part where you're gonna think I'm crazy. I am, yes, I'm using my rolling pin to roll this out. I'm gonna roll this out as flat as I can in this little this little bag. And it's not a perfect square, but I tried to make it kind of as close to it as possible. And um, I'm just trying to get it so that it's all the same depth, you know, thickness. And I'm using my little pastry um, bench scraper to cut little lines in it. And the reason for that is so that when I get these in my freezer and they are totally frozen and I'm ready to use them. If I want to make burgers, I can just snap off, snap them in half and then in half again so that I have four burgers ready to put in the pan. Yes, they'll look kind of like Wendy's burgers because they're they're square. That's okay though. Um, I mean, you can reset, reshape them if you want to thaw them out, but a lot of times I'll just snap it and put it right in the pan. Um, but this is super cool because if you don't want to make burgers, it's not a problem. You can just take the whole bit of ground beef out and put it in the pan and, and cook it just like you normally would but used to I had this little hamburger shaper thing that I would use to do my to do my hamburgers before I would freeze them but honestly it would just get really messy and then I would find okay I've got these packages that are like really dedicated and meant to be hamburgers in my freezer and then I have others that are just big blocks of ground beef in my freezer and then, you know, it just seemed like this was a good solution. This was a good way to have it stored away. It doesn't take up much space. It's super condensed in size. And I can't, I mean, I can't tell you how easy it is to use them like this and have them on hand. So how great is that y'all look at all those quick burger meals I'll have hamburger steaks it's great so let's get back to this haul lots more to share all right this is gonna seem disjointed I don't even care though I got two cases of chicken noodle soup because we go through a lot of that another case of cream of mushroom soup I have two cases on hand but I just wanted to get one more because I've been hearing the prices are going up on that in the stores I've not been paying close attention I'll admit but I mean it's great to have cream of mushroom soup on hand and then a huge box of raisin bran because it's delicious and it's good for you and I don't eat it every day but I do enjoy it so I figure this is a great buy getting this enormous box of raisin bran. All right I also got this 10 pound bag of these nice big russet potatoes. No I didn't get a video of this out on my counter because honestly I forgot to record this part. I did put them away beforehand as well as these next few items that I'm going to mention. Obviously you can use russets for so many things. Butter. I use a ton of butter 
Usually I buy Challenge Butter, that's my favorite brand of butter to buy, but the price on this four pack from Sam's Club just is too good to pass up. And so I had to buy this so I have at least four extra pounds on hand. Then I got this case of bleach. It's a much better buy this way. Be bleach is getting ridiculously expensive, y'all. I don't know if you've noticed, but like the price on that just seems to have really gone up. But this is good bleach. This is the kind that, you know, definitely kills 99.9% .9 of germs. So I like it. Four cases of water. I always want to have plenty of water on hand. This is another thing that I, you know, prices are going up on. I used to buy spring water all the time, um, but now it's just... Well, it's cost prohibitive, I mean, because it's getting so expensive. I'm not spending $6 on a case of water. And that's what it is right now for like the 30 some pack of spring water at Walmart. So I'm getting these purified water cases. I know a lot of you are like, oh, just use your Berkey and just drink from a water bottle that you can recycle at home. That's great. Um, I have a Berkey and an, all, that, all that's wonderful, but I still like to have bottled water on hand. I also have gallons of water on hand and I have 10 five gallon buckets of water on hand because we like to make sure we have plenty, plenty, plenty of water stored up. And this is definitely a more economical way to go. So this is what we do. Last item, y'all are gonna think I'm crazy. I don't even care. Y'all, these are the best bath towels. We love these so much. Um, we already had a couple, but we needed more. And so when I, you know, did this order, I was like, you know what? We're gonna get some more. So we got four more bath towels and four washcloths. These are so thick and they're huge and they just feel so good. And we have our washer and dryer in the bathroom just because that's how it is here. So, you know, we, we might like, well, I do it. I'm sure my son does it when he takes a shower, but I like to fluff my towel in the dryer while I'm in the shower. And then when I get out of the shower, I have a nice hot towel ready to go. And so, and these are, these are big and fluffy and wonderful and they feel so good. So I just really recommend them. Um, and you know what? I will, I'll put a link to these in the show notes in case you're interested. All right, so that's it guys. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. What items have you been looking for great deals for at your grocery store or your big box store? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.